I hope. person may make a video or audio recording of an open session of any meeting or may transmit the meeting through any medium subject to reasonable requirements of the chair as to the number placement and operation of equipment used so as not to interfere with the conduct of the meeting. Any person intending to make such recording shall notify the chair forthwith. All documents referenced or used during the meeting are to be submitted in duplicate to the chair pursuant to the open meeting and public records laws. All documents shall become part of the official record of the meeting. Okay, may we have the uh, reading of the minutes? Have them accepted. Okay, I make a motion that the meeting minutes from the November 1st, 2021 meet, uh, minutes be accepted. I second it. Anybody have anything they want to? Discuss on the minutes that were accepted from November, from November 1st. Okay, I have a vote. All in favor? Aye. 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 Yep. We can't vote. Yeah, we can't vote. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. yeah. I abstain. Please report. All right. Um, and ask if there are any opposition. Any opposition to it? Um, and we still need to accept the minutes from the October meeting. So, we have a motion to accept the minutes from October. A motion to accept the meeting from the October meetings, minutes from the October meeting. Okay. Anybody want a second? I'll second. Okay, so any discussion on that? On that uh, minutes, on that set of minutes. Okay, so voted, but aye. Aye. Right. Aye, please report. And Audrey, you want to be on record uh, to your vote, yes or no? Yes. Yeah, yes. thank you. All right. I will. Nope. Yeah. Mm -hmm. All right. Okay. Treasury. Treasury. Yeah. Ready for the Treasury report for today. Okay, um, so um, we generally, we give a report to the treasurer to review ahead of time. I do, um, in fact, complete the information we pull it right off the unit system. So um, the general fund is the, the receipts that are received from the city of Gardner for the general operation of the senior center. Uh, our budget is about 183000 we spent uh, through September. Um, you know, 40,000 through November, 73,000, um, and in just October, November was 34,000. So we have a balance of 110,000. That's the 183 minus the 73 year to date. 110,000, 133 left in our budget. Uh, the primary line items in the general fund are salaries. By far, they they make up the vast majority of the budget. And, uh, you know, right now we're right on target for um, our salaries. There's been relatively no changes in the gift funds. In the October-November time frame, we had a $100 donation. And our balance as of December 7th is $49,935.43. On the revolving fund, we had a beginning balance of $23,351. we have received... 13,600 year to date. 7,000 of that, $7,207, came in in the month of October and November. We didn't break out October and November because we didn't do a, um, a finance report in October. Um, we've had expenses that include, uh, you know, just general items. So, uh, you know, some maintenance items. 
some performers. We bought some materials and supplies from the CAC, Hannaford's. Uh, Ledger was our summer outing cost for meals. Some expenses from Price Chopper relative to programs we hold. Uline, we bought some additional carts, utility carts to move stuff around. Uh, and then some just general expenses from Walmart. This month, or in this two months, we've spent, uh, we, we got a refund back for some Amazon expenses, which shows the debit of $33.28, but generally you'll see credit, so we had expenses of $161 from the Gardner CAC, mostly relative to our Thanksgiving meal. Um, that's for boxes and lids and containers. Uh, Hannaford's, we had a $153, which was not relative to the, um, the holiday meal, that was for just our general uh, socials and things like that. Credit card expenses of $954, which include uh, volunteer pizza, the, um, the, the COVID clinic food that we bought for the volunteers who were there all day, some decorations, the Red Apple Farm event that we have for $685, and gift cards for $250 over the two months that we gave to volunteers uh, during rec the volunteer recognition and that we used as raffle items for the Red Apple Farm event. So those were the, the primary expenses in October, November. We spent about 5,000, not about, we spent $5,595.34 in those two months, which still gives us you know, a whopping balance in our account of $31,975. I think it's important to note of that $31,975, that 5,000 of that is earmarked specifically for our special senior fund that will um, be available on uh, or after the first year. So there's an earmark of 5,000. We will be receiving a second $5,000 check for that program as well. And then finally on the state grant, we haven't been allocating a lot of expenses to the state grant. Um, what generally we do is transfer or reallocate at several periods during the year. So we charge them either to the city account or we charge them to the revolving account and then move the eligible expenses into the um, appropriate uh, accounting uh, expenses, uh, accounts. So on our um, state account right now, we show $9,618 of actual cash. That was the carryover from last year. In addition to the $9,618.35 we carried over from last year, we will get a state grant of about $50,000, $49,464. It actually will be more than that. The last allocation we got was predicated on a $12 per senior per capita. Uh, the state legislature voted to increase it to $14 and use the 2020 numbers. So the numbers that we got in uh, 2021 will be the same numbers of seniors, but we'll just get more allocation per senior uh, this year. In 2023, I don't think that's going to happen. I think in 2023 they're going to use the 2020 census numbers as opposed to the 2010 census numbers. Um, mostly, uh, the vast majority of expenses that we have year to date are related to uh, staff and salaries, the outreach coordinator, the instructors uh, from yoga and fun and fitness, there are some expenses, large expenses for our accounting software and elevator and generator. But those are the three kind of primary categories. We did some major repairs to the elevator and generator this year. Um, and partly because they would have failed in an outage, so they were able to correct that problem. And the $1,800 that we used for technology was for the My Senior Center software. A lot of information. Any, anybody have any questions, thoughts, comments? And this format is pretty good. You know, you're able to kind of follow it. It really breaks it down nicely. Again, we won't have a net through September column next month because we just wanted to show you the October, November differences. So you'll see the October, November instead of net through September and then year to date and then December. Okay, Anything, uh, does anybody want uh, to accept the minutes of the treasury report? I'll make a motion to accept the minutes for the Treasurer's Report. 
Just a clarification, um, we're not accepting minutes, we actually are, re are accepting the treasurer's report. I'm sorry. Yeah. Right, I'm sorry. No, no problem. I accept, I, uh, accept the minutes. Any discussion on it? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Any opposed? Okay. <coughs> okay. Any abstentions? So um, just for clarification so we can have the vote recorded, Terry, did you vote to accept or? Oh, I abstain. Okay. And is there an issue with the report for to abstain, or you just didn't have enough information? I just abstained. Okay. All right. No. Okay. When there uh, old business, anything you want to bring up? Uh, just to give you the COVID nineteen update, I and mean, the uh, numbers in in Gardner are rising um, from. February to October, we had four COVID cases, um, positives that had gone through the center. That is somebody who had COVID, came to it, an event or function here and subsequently tested positive, even though they did not get COVID at the center. And we've had no secondary uh, outbreaks uh, as a result of that participation. As you all know, we have a pretty um, strict mask policy where folks can't mask because of disability, we offer accommodation. They can use a face shield instead of the mask. And there are some folks that prefer the face shield, but, but not many. And for folks who can't use the mask or face shield, they have to socially distance. That's our protocol here in the center. Now, the reality is that when you're playing, you know, a card game, for example, or you're playing cribbage, um, uh, you, you, there's no way to socially distance. I mean, you have to be at the table, you have to be within four feet. So the only options available to those participants are masking and face shielding. And I suppose they could try to socially distance, but I think it would make the game really hard. Especially pitch. I think pitch is a pretty fast game. So, um, um, so we do tra tracing and tracking. And for the record, um, just so that you all know and aware, we try to go over this every month. If we have a positive in any particular event, we uh, are able to identify the participants in that event through the My Senior Center software. We contact all of those people by phone or by email, generally by phone. Um, it's a much better application. We do a robocall to those folks that have had direct exposure or what we call in a triage level, a, a dangerous level of exposure. It's important also to note that generally a COVID exposure is somebody who is six feet or less for more than 15 minutes over a 24 hour period. We don't have that. It, it rarely happens in the center that somebody is close to each other for less than six feet um, for 15 minutes or more, unmasked. Um, so that's, but we still do that as a precaution. Um, we've had the issue a couple, many of you may have been on the receiving end of those calls. The lucky thing for us, knock on wood, is that we haven't had any secondary exposures uh, here. So keep your, um, keep your fingers crossed. I think that's the biggest COVID update. You know, I would like us to officially and, you know, maybe start working on now if anybody's interested and willing to do so, working on a policy that we can bring to the, you know, board and kind of more officially, um, you know, review and vote on and post as a policy. Right now it's just the director's um, operational guidelines that are in effect. And while they are substantive and were necessary early on when we thought this was going to be a short duration event, it's not a short duration event, and it doesn't look like it's going to be a short duration event going into 2022. So we probably should adopt a more formal policy. That's all I have for COVID. Any questions on the COVID update? Um, and I, I would like to get some feedback too, if you ever hear positives or negatives about how we're handling it. We always look to improve. Um, and you know we're not perfect. We've made some mistakes along the way, but you know we're trying to do our best. And then uh, board appointments, Ron. I think you can give an update on that. Well, we have one person who uh, has asked to be on the board, but uh, I don't think the April has gone in yet. And I think she applied for associate. She would right. yeah, associate. And then um, 
So in, on the November 15th meeting, the mayor sent up all the appointments for the board members of um, uh, Terry, Kathy, Gloria, Pat, and Audrey, existing board members. And he is now working with his group to identify a permanent um, replacement on the, the slot that was vacated by Sandy. So there's one board position open. I also want to say, well, I can if, if you would allow me. Mm -hmm. um, in the, in the um, announcement for the city council meetings, the appointments were all dated, um, you know, November of 2021. And they all were listed as having a expiration date of 1124, with the exception of Gloria and Pat, who one year appointments uh, from their respective organizations. That was, wasn't necessarily how the appointments went up, um, so the appointments were staggered. So they're not, if you went and signed it, you see there's no ending date on your appointment, but there is technically an ending date, and I think that it was misreported in the um, announcement from the City Council, because our bylaws required staggered terms. So we can't have seven people whose all whose term expires in 24. Um, and the mayor had that. I, I just think it got missed in the in the notice. My appointment says I expired in 24. Yeah. Right here. Yeah. That's why I think it was a mistake by the city clerk. We're gonna we're gonna talk to them about whether or not that's actually how the appointment went up, or that was how they just kind of transcribed it on me. I think Terry, to be honest, I think yours is, I think yours is right. But I think yours is the only one that was was right based on what went up to the council. Mine says November 24th. Yeah, yeah, that's what I said. Yeah, and the city council notices and appointments, they're all, they all have the 24 days. So we're going to get some clarification on that. I have a question. Sure. Uh, I'd like to be considered for the board, but is there some kind of a paperwork we have to fill out or anything like that? I'm not sure what the... Uh, yeah, Ken. Um, so the, the process is simply to make your um, interest known. So the board makes a recommendation, and it's really important to note the board makes a recommendation to the director and the director to the, um, to the mayor. But ultimately, it's the mayor's decision. The mayor decides who gets that appointment and who doesn't. So as much as Ron and I want to lobby or advocate for any of the associate board members here, uh, he may have somebody in the wings that he wants to appoint for a variety of reasons, and he's certainly within his prerogative to do that. The mayor makes an appointment, and then the city council confirms that appointment. So it's a it's a three-step process. But now that Ron knows, I'm sure um, you know we'd love to meet with you. I think there was another member here that expressed interest um, in being a um, kind of permanent board member. So we will, um, you know, engage with both of them. And ultimately, I defer to Ron. He's the chair. So at his pleasure, um, you know, I, I'll make the recommendation to the mayor. I don't have any skin in the game. Is it, so, just, is it just the one slot that's? There is just one slot. And then once it? that slot is filled, it's a board member slot, then we should probably deliberate on who will be in the vice chair position. That vice chair position will be a, a semi Temporary position because we revote on it in May. Yeah, so we'll we'll kind of go through that whole election. But so the answer to that is yes. It is a just a slot, total, and then just refresh my memory. A total of members that are, are board members. Seven. And we have six right now. We have six. Well, it's seven board members plus, and, and actually, I don't know how many of you know this, but there's a CEO of the organization. And the director serves as the CEO and also serves on the board. So right. seven appointed members by the mayor. Plus you. Plus me. That's what I thought. Thank you. And the current board composition is Ron, Terry, Kathy, Gloria, Pat, and Audrey. And then Sandy would have been the, the last one, but but the minor position. Great question. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, do we go under new business? I, I have a question. You have a question? New business. The art coordinator position, is that been filled? So that, that we're going to do that under new business, yeah. Okay, because we had it listed as old. We did. No. Oh, I apologize. We no, did no, have it. We did. Right. Um, so the answer to that question is it was filled. We, um, we actually, but, it, but it's vacant right now. So it was filled. We, um, 
advertised in July. We got a, a good number of responses. We interviewed three folks, three people for that job, and uh, hired a retired caseworker from Massachusetts Home Care Corporation. Um, <coughs> subsequent to that hire, eight weeks in, uh, there were some family issues, and um, she needed to attend to those family issues and asked whether or not you know she might be considered for the job if we're going to keep it open. Um, but we, you know we can't keep it open. She'll be available next summer. She is coming back and helping with programs and events. Um, you know, doing a little bit of calls as well, but uh, wasn't able to maintain the, the kind of 20 hours a week. So we did uh, advertise again. We interviewed uh, three people, but have not made a decision on uh, hiring them or not hiring them yet. No, no decision on hiring has been made. I, my feeling is, at this point, um, we, we probably you know, won't have a decision before the next board meeting or hopefully by the next board meeting, between now and then. Uh, may I, director's report, is that okay? So, you know, I'd love to be brief, but um, I can't say my name in less than 30 minutes, so get settled in, get comfortable, it's going to be a long ride. Um, by way of a update, I'm going to just uh, refer you to a letter that I sent out to Mayor Nicholson on December 7th. The mayor asked for an update of projects and initiatives we've undertaken this year and a list of projects for next year. And that's going to be really my, um, my, my report for today. So obviously the COVID-19 management has been really taking a lot of our time. And folks, it's not just about like walking around and making sure people are wearing masks. Um, you know, it's, it's giving updates at every class. Uh, a staff person, whether it's myself, Nancy, or Rob, goes in at, at the beginning of every class with yoga, line dancing, crafts, pool. Every morning we go with, we greet pool players and we give an update of what's going on. What's our current COVID policy and things like that. Um, trying to make sure that people are aware not only what's happening in the community, but what's happening in this community in particular. We have a distant uh, disinfection policy in place, which includes, you know, washing down, wiping down all of our chairs and furniture, using a sprayer in the elevators and common areas. Um, you know, Rob does that at least once a week. And our contact tracing. When we have to do a contact tracing, it's a lot of work. So it's not just about pushing a button and saying, here you go. We have to go back, look at, you know, when the person was in the center, who were all the people that were in close contact, secondary contact get those lists, generate the robocall, um, get that information out, and then respond to, and I think that's an important aspect, the folks that are getting those calls. Um, generally, when we do a robocall, we get, I don't know, Terry, what, 40, 50 people who call immediately after that call goes out, no matter what the message is. They see Senior Center, and they screen the call, don't want to answer it, so they call us back. So that takes a lot of staff time to field those calls. And we invite and encourage people to do that. We want them to call. Like we don't want people just um, either ignoring, not hearing, or being um, you know anxious about the messaging they got. Um, securing PPE and distributing PPE. So we've made a lot of requests, and we're very thankful to folks like Haywood Hospital, Community Health Center, City of Garden, Fire Department, Police Department, Emergency Management Agency for helping us uh, secure PPE, as well as Staples and uh, Marshalls who gave us kind of big boxes of hand sanitizer, tissues, and things like that. Both the mini ones, which are, uh, you know, we give out to our seniors at all kinds of different events so that they can carry them around. <laughs> um, and uh, we've expanded our exercise social education programs. The COVID clinics, again, were a big lift. They, they take a lot of work, time, and effort. Again, we enlisted a bunch of volunteers, thank God, for the new telephone system. I have said that a million times, I'm going to say it another million. That one small $5,000 investment by the City of Gardner in this center has created enormous opportunity for us. Now when a senior called, or before when a senior called and you were on the phone, they'd get a busy signal. Um, if you were listening to answering machine when nobody was calling and you were halfway through a message and somebody called, it would cut the, the, the message off. It was really hard to manage. We had to listen to messages when the office was closed. Um, and didn't afford us the opportunity to get back to people. This new system allows us to put six people 
on the phone at once. If any of them hang up, it immediately rings at all the phones so somebody can pick up. Uh, we all have voicemail, we can do robocalling. It's just, you know, when we think about a simple thing like a phone system, it has helped our, it, it immensely helped our lives and our operations. So I'm so appreciative to Bob O'Keefe and the IT department for helping us install that. But our clinic, you know, we literally made thousands of calls for the clinic. We made thousands of calls for programs, events. Terry was one of our heavy lifters. Kathy was one of our heavy lifters. Um, uh, Sandy was one of our heavy lifters, making those calls to our seniors, telling them about the center, projects, programs, events, the COVID clinic, and it afforded us the opportunity when we made that connection to ask them how they were, right? To do a check-in on thousands of people from this area. That's huge, by the way. Um, we had a lot of, a lot, a lot, a lot of, and I'm gonna just make a note, I just noticed a, um, a typo on the letter I sent to the mayor. So it's not Cherry City Church, it's Chair City Church. But an enormous number of partners, I, I won't even buy, I'm gonna, I'm gonna run through them real quick. Chair City Church, Prospect Street School, Chair City Pharmacy, Walmart, Wachusett Medical Reserve Corp, Garden Public Nurses. Um, I say Chair City Pharmacy, Garden Police Department, Woods Ambulance, Garden Fire Department, Area Retired Physicians and Nurses, Wachusett Medical Reserve Corps, Care Central VNA, Garden CAC, and Volunteers, too numerous to mention. A ton of programs and services. Last year we spent about $12,000 on tax aid um, because the AARP volunteer tax service was not being run. Um, there were a lot of seniors that didn't have access to support uh, and assistance to do their taxes, so we made a deal with H&R Block. We supported about 75, 75 individuals and spent about $12,000. This year we have tax aid, we secured tax aid, they will be here every Tuesday from uh, February 1st through April 15th. So um, that's a great bit of exciting news, just for you all know. And a lot of new programs, exercise, wood carver, lots of share card, elder, elder law, housing, just a, a huge number of programs. Uh, we had a record number of people at Thanksgiving. We served about 200 and a little over 250 people. We have, um, we set our limit at 200 for Christmas, thinking we wouldn't fill it. We filled it uh, last week, so and we're still getting calls. We can't accommodate those folks unless uh, magically we get more food. But we'll be serving 200, at least 200 people for uh, Christmas. We had a record number of people for our uh, summer picnic. Uh, we did again a little over 200 people for dinner, um, with a great job by the Templeton Fish and Gun Club. It became great. If it didn't, you missed a great event. And then just a lot of really cool things happening. But one of the, the neatest things I think we did, um, as a result of a, of a need, we reached out to a lot of different departments, agencies, and organizations in the city and said, hey, will you come here and help us with a program we have that we run weekly? And they said yes. And as a result, we've had uh, just an enormous number of people who may not be inclined to come to the center, our building inspector our health inspector, the city auditor, the city treasurer, um, a chief executive from CHC, um, city councilors, we've had Haywood Hospital representatives, uh, Gardner Ale House owner Rick Walton came in and spent you know, time with us doing this. It's really kind of neat because it gets us, a lot of people who are seniors may need to be connected with at some point in time, it makes a connection with them, it creates a relationship. And it also creates a relationship for us when we have hat in hand, which we often do, they're more responsive because they know about the programs and services we provide. So that's been really cool. Um, staffing, obviously we hired a new admin since, since February, hired a new admin, hired an outreach person and now looking for an outreach person again. Um, technology, we talked about the phone system, new printer, copier. We created and launched a new Facebook page, which just in one week alone had over 900 views. That is incredible um, compared to where we were uh, in February. Uh, you know, we had a very few people seeing us. So, my message to you all right now, gratuitous plug, if you are on Facebook, use Facebook, even moderately, please go to Gardner Senior Center, all one word, uh, on Facebook, like our page, and share it with your friends. It's how we get information out in a better way. Um, develop COVID uh, outreach and notification process. I talked about the outreach program, but one of the other things we've done as a really neat outreach, 
And I'm hoping you've all seen it and want my autograph after. No, because again, this is an opportunity for us to get visitors, guests, and experts in the field um, integrated with the Senior Center. We started a cable TV show called Senior Moments. Um, we started that in March of this year. Every month we've had a show and a program, and it has attracted people like the mayor, the state rep, DA, early. Um, we have had health people, so uh, Wynn Brown, the CEO of Haywood Healthcare, was a guest. Elder law, financial advisors, the CAC director was on talking about food and nutrition and financial advisors, Medicare advisors, all talking about issues or topics that are relative and relevant to our, um, our community. Some facilities, we, we, that sewer line, right? I talk about that all the time, but it prevented us from using the kitchen. It was a barrier to getting a permit. We now have that fixed and can use the kitchen for events and functions. Heating system, handicap accessible countertop, if you've all seen it, hopefully, at our office, a new countertop so folks with wheelchairs can wheel in, but more importantly, anyone who's filling out forms has a place to fill out forms and be engaged as opposed to trying to, to you know, write on that little six inch space we used to have. A new awning, a new flagpole, hallway stairs and floor tiles were replaced, and uh, generators. Uh, next year, we have some anticipated projects. Rob, Nancy, and I met. We have to get the heating system in our administrative wing uh, done. It's really meant for the cooling part of it, because right now we put uh, window units in, and that's causing problems with seals and things like that. We just want to stop using those if we can. Um, we are hoping to install some new ovens in the kitchen downstairs. Um, we have to get our fire alarm upgraded in this building. Um, we have a, 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 a leak in our roof that will have to be fixed in the next couple months. Got to look at that ramp. That ramp was, I guess, you know, it's been great. It's been a great service, but we need to look at it. It's getting a little punchy. It may need some repairs or need to be replaced. The building inspector has been asked to come over and give us a hand uh, looking at that. Um, and then, you know, just the general stuff, refreshing paint, um, expanding our surveillance system, camera monitoring system, which it, again doesn't seem, it's not a burglar system, it's really helpful for us when a senior falls or there's an incident, we can see where it is and go there, uh, you know, immediately. And in every occasion where there has been an accident, the cameras are what led us to the person, so they're really helpful. Um, and then some just kind of, uh, you know, silly things like video messaging board, um, things like that to increase communications for those that are here. Just so you know, we talked about the LGBTQI support group. That is absolutely scheduled. Our first meeting is scheduled for January. Um, our caregiver group had its first meeting last Friday. So those two groups are up, up and going. There were no participants in the caregiver group, but it's new. That is the nature of support groups. You're not gonna get 100 people at the first meeting. When I started my men's support group nine years ago, they told me it would take a year to get my first man through the door. So um, it, luckily it took less time than that, but that is the nature of the beast. Um, and then expanding associate membership. And we've talked a little bit about this and we can talk about it in the visioning and, and strategic planning. You know, we want to get people who are engaged in the senior community engaged here. Whether it's housing or nutrition or transportation, Having them at our table affords us the opportunity to look at opportunities and challenges that our senior community that use the center, but by far more and large, don't use the center. How do we get them engaged in whatever program is enticing to them, whether it's bowling or you know, archery or you know, coming here and doing yoga? How do we um, you know, get the message to them? And having multiple players on at the table would do that. And our associate membership does allow for that. And in fact, associate membership was created just for the opportunity to get organizations, people, and agencies that support the center here at the table and you know have some skin and investment in the game. So that gives us some opportunities, but we can talk about that as part of our strategic plan and visioning session. I'm out of breath. Woo! Um, I did submit our budget to the mayor. The budget that I submit to the mayor is the budget under the city um, auspices. There, there was not a lot um, of changes to the um, the mayor's the, the city budget. Some minor minor changes, um, but typically it's a 
even funded, level funded budget request for 2023. And that process actually starts in February, March with the City Council. It's amazing to me that we're talking about budget in December, but um, you know, not even halfway through the year. But it, it's, it also gives us a time to, be, to reflect and identify what our opportunities are. All right. I feel like I could talk another 25 minutes. Ken. The, the uh, senior moments, yes. which is a good thing, but it's hard to, to connect with it is. You have to look at Channel 8, listen to the horrible music, and it runs, you know. Uh, can, that, can those be put in the monthly newsletter? The answer is, um, the month, the, yes, the, the, um, the senior moments, guests can be put in there. We know generally six months out who our guests are. Um, the dates and times, I can't. And the reason I can't is it really depends on who else has gone in and taped the show and what their availability is. So they might give us the first two weeks after we take, or they might give us the last two weeks after we take. So we always have a month, and within that month they show it, but the, the general mainstream scheduling happens really within a two-week, 24-day period. Will um, it be on the Facebook page? So what they did do, what they did start doing for me is after the show airs, so they can't do it before the show, but well after the show airs on GTV, they give me a video um, when I used, so I used to do this for the, the Haywood Hospital in the chamber. A month later, they would give me the file, the MP4 file, that I could upload onto our city's web, uh, not our city's, Haywood's website, my members group website, or the chamber's website. We haven't started that yet because they're actually upgrading all of their equipment to high def. So it's been a little, um, they, they're wicked supportive. They do anything I ask them to do. I just haven't asked them to do that lift because they're in the throes of, of changing all their systems around. Um, next week, I, not next week, I thought next month, Matt Desero from GET is coming to the center. So he's coming with those high def cameras and he's going to actually do some filming with some of the activities we have going on here. So that's kind of neat. Um, that was one of the things we asked so that we can be real time, like this is what's going on as opposed to just, you know, think about it. But it's a great question. We will get the links. We will upload them to YouTube eventually um, and be able to show all those programs in there. And then we will create a link to those YouTubes on the Senior Center's Facebook page and uh, website. Yeah, we will do that, Ken. But it's a, it's a great comment, great observation. Thank you. Have you seen, anybody seen them? Any, nobody's seen one of them? They're at all times. Nobody sees them. They are at all times, yeah. I got a lot, a lot of comments about the elder law and the financial advisor. When Brown just happened, and we just did his, this was shown last week, and um, at the um, Christmas party on December 6th, I heard a couple of comments. People like, oh, yeah, Wynn Brown, nice. That's a, I mean, that's a huge lift for someone who's as busy as he is with an enormous organization, 1,600 employees, to come spend an hour and a half to talk to seniors about what's going on at the hospital that affects us. So it's really pretty nice. Mm -hmm. They don't. Yeah, the guy, they, and they recognize that that's a little bit of a, of a um, barrier to them too, providing access to programming. Because you have to sit there for 20 minutes and watch the slides go through before the guide comes up. Um, lots of great information on there though. By all means, we want and encourage people to go to GET. Because information like tree lightings and nutrition programs and gifts for kids, all of those are on there. But if you don't have 20 minutes to spend watching it, you know, it can be frustrating. So the answer is to not take, well, they are live in the sense that there are two live beings. They program us, they, they film us, um, and then they take those and upload them later. So they air them later, but it is a live show, which makes the dynamics really interesting. So I mean, one of these days you should just come and watch how it's filmed. It's a really kind of neat process, totally extemporaneous, We'll set up a few questions just to start the conversation rolling, and then it's just a conversation like, oh, you were talking about this, tell me more. And it gives the people an opportunity to talk about the link between their organization and our seniors. So it's, it's pretty good. If you have a chance to watch it, I want to thank all our guests who have taken so much time out of their schedule to make our show possible to the senior community. Any other questions? I still have 20 minutes, Ron. <laughs>
still have open discussion from it. We do, <laughs> yeah. <clears throat> so anybody have any comments or something you want to say about what Mike has brought up so far? Yes, I think that um, the senior center has reorganized, it's headed in the right direction. I've never seen so many activities going on and everybody is just so hyper about it. I'm, I'm looking forward to participating. I was told that starting in January I can, and because uh, they told me to go slow. And uh, I just think it's really rewarding to the community what has been done. Audrey, I appreciate that. Thank you so much. Um, you know, we're not, we recognize we've had some shortcomings. There are some things that, um, you know, even in the day-to-day -day operations, have been a challenge for us. But I really want to give credit to the folks that make this happen. Um, I have a tremendous staff. Nancy has done a remarkable job coming out of the gate. Um, she is a great ambassador for the Senior Center. She's a, just a very good employee, dedicated, committed. Um, the fidelity there is unbelievable. Uh, Rob, you all know, Rob mm -hmm. is a force in and of himself. And you know, there isn't an occasion, uh, Mr. Chair, I want to make sure you know this, that we have an event that needs, you know, set up or some kind of attention that he's not there, hands-on. Um, and it's not just about setting tables up. He's hands-on with our seniors. He gets to know now intimately the programs. If he's not in the middle of setting chairs or tables up and he's at his desk, he's answering the phone. I mean, this is a guy who really believes in the, um, in the service. So it's, it's, it's easy to be successful when you have a lot of great staff, but also our volunteers are unbelievable. We talked a little bit about the phone crew that we had in. That crew alone would, would absolutely make your heart just pound it, it enormously with the love and attention they give to the seniors. Because it's not a quick call. It's not a, hey, come to the center rope and click. It's how you doing, what's going on? Oh, geez, I saw you at church. And this is, um, it's a great conversation. And it feels people, makes people feel like they're, um, their value, right? And that's an important thing. So our volunteers are incredible, incredible. Um, we just have a really nice environment. If you're looking to go hang out somewhere, um, come here, because people are just so good to each other. Um, the people who participate are so loving and caring and attentive. It's, it's a neat environment. Yeah, so Audrey, I appreciate it. Yeah. Now, am I on that list because I never received a call? You are on the, a COVID call? Oh, no problem. So what we did is we looked at folks that had had participation okay. in the last couple months and we took them off. Okay. So we were look, really looking at anybody who hasn't been here from like March previous. Okay. Um, so you, you may not have gotten a call because you were already involved and engaged. We didn't you know, call those folks. We were really looking for people who became disengaged. Okay. Yeah, good question, thank you. Well, there was a lot of people before I, because of health reasons, stopped that I noticed and I knew that weren't coming and I asked them, you know, and they lost interest. Yeah, yeah we have a little bit of that too. Um, but hopefully the program services all speak for themselves and we can transcend, you know, any, you don't know, previous notions. Cool? Okay. So we go to uh, open discussion. Yeah, a little bit open discussion. A little bit of open into the to one section. Well, one thing I was wondering, okay, is there any way that we can get the people that are the people that do the minutes and the, and the thing, uh, have the minutes put on to the website quicker? That's a great question. And we... It's like two to three weeks before I can see them online to hear, to see what we're doing and stuff. So last month was a little bit of an anomaly because typically I'm the one who does that. Um, so I download the video, send it immediately to Bob and get it uploaded. Um, last month the card was brought over, so it was you know having to move the card physically. So the next day that happened, 
and then they weren't there, so it took them you know, a little extra time. But typically we get them up pretty quick. Okay. Bob and I are gonna coordinate better on getting the link. But one of the other interesting things you said though, that people should know, is we are getting a subscription to closed captioning. And you all know what closed captioning is, right? It, it translates what's said into words for folks that have a hearing disability. So um, YouTube is giving us closed captioning for our council meetings. So that will create closed captioning, and people that are watching it will be able to see that. But once you have closed captioning, you can actually get a transcript of that closed captioning. So it will print out everything that um, is being said. Now anybody who's ever watched that knows the interpretation isn't always right, right? Sometimes it comes up with weird words or says something that you didn't really say. That'll be the job of the secretary to kind of go through and clean that up, but it will be much easier to do than to reconstruct the whole meeting. And then we will use the closed captioning. We won't really have to take minutes. The closed captioning will do it for us. Um, that is already happening, by the way, for some city committees. It's been rolled out already for the, um, the city council, uh, I know of, and it's being rolled out to the schools eventually. It's going to be rolled out to all of us, um, but they want to beta test it on a few before they uh, do it globally. So hopefully, hopefully the January meeting, we will actually have that service, and we can kind of stop worrying about taking minutes and be actively engaged. I know when I take minutes, I, it's hard for me to follow a conversation. I'm 12 seconds behind trying to get the words down. And then if you do say something, you miss, you know, capturing whatever was said. So I think this would be a nice um, addition. So I don't have the availability to pull it up though. Oh, you will. Yeah, you're, you're going to get the transcript. You're going to get it. Um, and then you're going to look at, yeah. you know, what, what, what it transcribed words to. Like if we never talked about Mars, you'll take that out. Okay. <laughs> and we'll work on it. Yeah. Yeah. No, I want to ask, uh, were you all set for uh, the next Thursday we're doing the dinner for Christmas? Do we have all the staff or the help that we need? Yeah, um, I would check with Nancy. I'm having her coordinate the volunteers. I have a very different philosophy than other people. I think the more volunteers you have, the better. I would rather have somebody not doing a heavy lift you know, taking their time, working on a salad, whatever it is they're doing, then have too few people and get behind. Um, so if you notice at our COVID clinics, we were, we were really ratcheted up. It's really interesting. The first COVID clinic we did, we did about 125, a little over 125 COVID vaccines at Chair City Church. Had enormous capacity. I mean, it, it felt like nobody was there. At the end of the day, we're like, nobody showed up. And we did our numbers and counted. Almost everyone showed up, and we had 10 walk-ins. So um, it was crazy. So we said, oh, we have lots of capacity. We tripled it. We went to 360 people for the second COVID clinic. And any of you worked it, and it felt like nobody was there, right? It just, because, because, solely and strictly, because we had a lot of volunteers. They made the process work. They moved people along. So um, if you volunteer next week, and you find that there are 600 people here, I apologize in advance, but I'd rather have, you know, a many hands make light work mentality than be short on our volunteers. And it's nice to be part of something even if it's just, um, you know, providing support. So if you're interested, come on by, we'd love to have you. And it's Wednesday, we serve from 12 to 1, um, and I'm glad you asked that question. We really looked at doing this as a community meal. Now the Elks Club did Thanksgiving and they did by God an amazing job. More so because the numbers of people that responded was overwhelming. Um, we initially had a target of 200 people. We ended up with 240 people um, plus volunteers and staff. It was the largest one they've ever done. Um, and again, there were some small issues. We didn't quite have enough peas to serve folks, but the rest of the food there was an abundance of, so we did really well. And the Elks Club, ladies and gentlemen, were unbelievable partners. The Gardner Rotary Club sponsored it. We had Horgan's Cleaner, Chairtown Lumber, and uh, Dave Richard Excavating provided some additional funds. The Lions Club is providing some funds for the Christmas meal. Um, and we have utilized our relationships and supported the center to make this a community meal. So every one of our major partners, um, Gardner Ale House, Williams Restaurant, 
Gardner Rehab, Baldwinville Nursing. I'm going to get some Whit Whitfords, who does the um, the food service at the schools. They've all come forward and are going to do one of the dishes for the dinner. So, uh, for example, um, uh, Haywood Commons is doing a special cranberry stuffing, and not a, just a stove top, they're making it from scratch for 200 people. And Williams is making squash for 200 people, and Gardner House is doing the salad for 200 people. So it's no heavy lift, again, many hands make light work, it's no huge heavy lift for any one organization, everybody's able to contribute a little bit, and uh, you know we're really excited about that. So we may be here cooking turkeys Tuesday night, but um, <laughs> I think that's going to be resolved pretty easily too. I'm excited about that. And Gardner Rehab is doing some tchotchkes for us. Priscilla's is donating some chocolate. Tabletop pie with pies. Man, if you don't get fat after this meeting, I, I mean this um, dinner, I don't know what will. Cause it, it's going to be really remarkable. I've got one other thing I'd like to bring up because I was here for one of our activities last week and I was speaking with the gentleman who runs the bingo downstairs. And I guess their numbers have been going down, so please, uh, please pass on the word to uh, your friends and, and others who they want to have an afternoon of bingo. It starts at 1 o'clock down in the lower level. Uh, please have them join us. They, do a, they really do a good job, and that's one of the activities we're bringing community folks in. So we have a guest caller every week. Um, in the last three weeks, we had, let's see if I can remember, we had um, Alec Dernalowitz. We had Lisa Ellis and then John Richard, who's the city auditor, who came in. And you know what's, what's really neat about that is these folks never get asked to do things like this. If you think about what their day is, it's in the office all day, every day. Um, they never get a chance to kind of come out and work in the community in their jobs and roles. So it's nice to get them engaged. Um, bingo is a problem that's happening all around town, right? Lower numbers. COVID is certainly keeping people away to some extent. But, uh, Ron, if I can just kind of tag on what you said. Every event here, we are aggressive in our COVID management. So no one be, you know, rest assured when you come in, everyone's gonna be wearing masks. If they're not wearing masks, they're gonna be wearing a face shield. If they're not wearing a face shield, they're gonna be socially distant. It's required to be here at the center. We hand sanitize, we disinfect, um, you know, we really try, and we do COVID tracking and tracing um, very aggressively. And there's no agency around, the senior center around that does the tracking and tracing that we do. So um, I feel really confident in having people come, and I can only say that because this board has supported our COVID policies. If we weren't able to do that, quite honestly, we probably would have been shut down by now already this year. So um, you know, we're we're definitely doing everything right in that regard. Not in other regards, but in that regard. Anybody who's not who might be watching this later on. I'm an avid reader, but we have a great library downstairs. If you can't find something, to, a book that interests you, it, I'll be surprised. That we have all, hundreds of books down there. They have puzzles. They have all kinds of things that you can take home and you know read and look at and use. Every week, Ken. Every week we have somebody coming in and donating books, new books recently released books, you know, not things that have been in their attic for 20 years. So all the best sellers are there, you know, the biggest titles are there, um, and it's hard for us, and at some point in time, as an organization, we're going to have to look at expanding the footprint of our library, just because we don't have the capacity to meet um, the generosity of our community. So we have a ton of puzzles, and we just got a case of DVDs, um, which, you know, people think, well, library is just about books. We provide access to these movies because there are a lot of folks that are isolated, that aren't going out, that don't want to go out, don't want to be in crowds, um, that may not be able to afford on demand or those kinds of things. Well, they can come in and get some of the most recent releases of movies. Um, and again, you set me up for this, so I'm going to use this as an opportunity. If there is somebody watching and they have a collection of new books they'd like to donate or a collection of DVDs, they'd like to donate, or some new puzzles they're looking to find a home for, we readily accept, um, invite and encourage folks to, to bring those to the senior center so others can use it. We also have a great technology center, and we talk about volunteers. Every Monday from 10.30 to 11.30, 12 o'clock, Jen Mulgrew comes
comes in and does assistance for seniors for their phones, for their tablets, for their PCs. We have two computers located in the library, so if you need to check your email or do a Google search or learn how to do searches on the internet, come see Jen. She does a great job and people are so um, relieved and educated uh, after they spend time with her. So we hope you come down. Great, uh, Ken, thank you for mentioning. I always forget the library, I'll tell you that, I do. But every day we're in it, every it's single day. Resources. Yeah, it's terrific. Yeah, anybody else have anything you want to bring up for open discussion? Um, I wanted to mention the um, music programs, for an example, um, that maybe we could boost attendance at some of them if there was a little better um, access for people to know about them. For instance, if you had um, just a, a notice of, you know, sheet of paper that had it advertised and placed at, for instance, the Gardner High Rise, Gar West, um, you know, maybe um, Hillside Gardens, you know, places where there's a community of senior citizens that might be interested but might not know about it otherwise. So that might be something you'd consider. Yeah, it's 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 a great point, and we wrestle with that, Mary, every um, every month. So we all of the concerts were publicized in the newsletter. We put boards up here. Um, we you know um, advertise on GET. But how do we get the word out effectively? And so we certainly you know love those uh, ideas, suggestions, and have the capacity to do it. I mean, we're dropping newsletters off. We can drop flyers off at the same time. It's not in all of those places. Um, I think one of the other questions that this begs to, this opportunity begs to be asked and answered, not right now, is how do we engage our senior community that isn't engaged? For example, the folks at Pinal House, High Rise, and um, Hillside Gardens that are otherwise, you know, not really uh, participants here. And I think when we start to look at strategic planning and visioning, we talked about, um, you know, informally, and we'll put a plan together and promote that in the January meeting. Um, but formally having sessions in each of those communities, like not just having them here. Because if we have a session here, the only people we're going to get here are the ones that come here. Uh, but going out to the Bernal House and just having a listening session, that may include three people, it may include 30 people, but it certainly is valuable to hear what other people are saying, what's the perception, um, how do we, uh, you know, effectuate a program that's better able to accommodate their needs. So uh, it's a great point. How do we reach those communities better? And um, we are struggling with the answer to that. But with your help, you know, hopefully we'll find some solutions. One, one good way would be, I know the mic, they can schedule the mic. A lot of these people don't try. But if, um, if somehow we could afford, when we were having a program here, if we could afford to hire something from mic to go and pick up people like these, they can bring them here and bring them home. Because I see, you know, they have to wait for the bus and they have to call them. Mm -hmm. But if we, if we, the senior center, could rent some kind of a, a vehicle and go at certain times, say the Banal House are picking up at one, and make a little circle and bring them here and then take them home. That's a great idea. That's a um, good idea to consider. And that would, what, that would be successful because when I was working and I was seeing the program manager at Gamma, we got a lot of calls. There's, uh, there's a dance. They can't go because they don't have transportation. And I spoke with Woods at the time because it was it was when uh, the mother was involved and everything, and I knew her. And she immediately got on it and volunteered that a van and a driver for me once a month to go to the dance. Yeah, we will definitely explore that. And Terry, I'm going to ask you to remind me. I made. It, I'm going to make a note. Um, Mart has been a great partner of ours. They, as much sometimes as organizations are, you know, not necessarily given the highest um, accolades. I give them really high accolades. Every time we've asked for something, they've been very responsive. Um, and when I worked for the city and organized the fireworks. They were very accommodating in creating a loop for us to bring folks from the various housing uh, units to the fireworks who couldn't otherwise drive. So it worked out great. My feeling is they're pretty community oriented. I think they'd be receptive to that. 
And, and it's not high cost, because they're already subsidized by the state, so they can't kind of double dip, so that you know, it would be a low cost to us. Yeah, great idea. Mm -hmm. We did, yeah. Well, that was the thing that, that stopped it, is we would start, we would have a, a meal at the uh, Banal House and the High Rise, typically Subway sandwiches or pizza, something like that, coffee, then we'd get on a bus and do a route. The route was pre-established, and one of the folks that did that, um, and I, I hate to be, um, to bring you know a little bit of of, um, of bad news in. But Andy Boucher was one of our, our three coordinators that helped do that. And Andy and I would drive around the city and kind of scope out and map out where the lights were, and then create our map and off we went. Um, finding somebody to do that today is difficult, but more importantly, what's challenging is up until the last two years, people weren't decorating. But by God, they're decorating now. You should see Ron's house. They're not Ron's house. Well, the whole street. street. Yeah, the whole street. Ron's street. Is of Ron street. Yeah. The whole section of Ron's street is lesser yeah. as the go past the stop sign. Well, the railroad track. But they're still there. And I've got a couple of houses on my street, just a couple of months and a little key. But um, covered with lights and decorations and stuff. It's, I took my granddaughter home that way yesterday. Maybe we'll start promoting that now and do a, a Christmas light tour next year. Yeah. Yeah. Because didn't they have a, a drive at one of the houses where they donated to yeah. the CAC? That was wonderful. Yeah, yeah they did. Yeah. So, yeah, very successful. Really? Was that the one down on West Street? No. no. That's not the one that doesn't use it. That's what I'm thinking of that one. No, it was off of Leo Drive, wasn't it? Yes, yeah, yeah. it was down that way. Yeah. And the one on West Street was a huge draw. Um, that was uh, Mark and Tina Batez right. that did that and um, did that for years. I'm surprised they didn't do it this year, but uh, all right. I had one other um, thought about, I heard the state announced that they were um, sending the quick rapid test kits to some communities in the near future. And could you maybe check on that? Um, for the next meeting to see if Gardner is scheduled to get some and how they're going to distribute them and if they're seniors that are low income and can't afford to get them but would like to get them, if they have access to any of that through the senior center here or tell them how they could access them. That, that, that again is great. It goes back to our COVID management and I skimmed over very quickly what we do with COVID management. One of the things we do is provide access to rapid tests. Um, it's not it's not open to the community. So if we have somebody here who's positive and there was a close contact, we monitor and track them and afford them the opportunity to get tested here. All of our staff tests and, and exposure. Um, we include the CAC staff in that because they're in the building. So if there's an exposure upstairs, we all get tested and track, trace, trace and track, and they all trace and track. So it's a symbiotic relationship. Um, and we do provide access to seniors who are struggling to find a kit. Um, they're expensive. Uh, they are expensive. Our health care provider, our partner in the COVID vaccine uh, booster clinics and vaccine clinics gave us access to, um, to their staff to get these, these um, rapids done, but it, but it is a problem. So even if they come to Gardner, they're probably going to be distributed through the hospital and the community health center. That's typically or maybe even through the Board of Health to those agencies, but that's typically because they're the health care providers, that's where they where they go. Um, and earmarking them is difficult, but I'm certainly willing, and anybody who has seen me in the last six months knows when it comes to, you know, COVID um, testing capacity, I am probably one of the most aggressive senior center directors around about that. Not that there aren't others that are doing it or trying to do it, but we've been, you know, I'm on their backs all the time about it, so I will I will find out about the rapids. And and the answer is right now, by the way, just again to make sure everyone's clear, where there's a positive here, and somebody's in close proximity, we do test, uh, provide access to test for those people. Mm -hmm. But somebody generally from the community who's not in, involved, we wouldn't do that. 
or if they need a test because they're traveling or for some other purpose, only exposure or symptoms do we do in fact. Great question, though. Now, that uh, facility is classed from the hospital, is that just uh, a referral from like the doctor or something? Nope, that's a, that is a, um, a, a PCR test, so that is the more aggressive lab test. Takes a little bit more time. Um, they do a little bit more intensive uh, testing on the sample to determine whether or not it's positive. It is by appointment only. Yeah. Um, as far as I know, they don't have walking capacity. You have to call the number to get an appointment. Urgent care used to do it in Gardner. Urgent care in Gardner doesn't anymore. CHC does testing for their patients only in Gardner um, every Friday, I think. Uh, but they have an open access testing site in Fitchburg. Um, so affords people to walk in. And I think, by the way, Fitchburg uh, Urgent Care also has one. So the most, um, most people are being referred right now to Holden Urgent Care for, uh, for PCR tests, uh, non-appointment based. But Haywood is still doing it, and they're, they're a, a huge, active part of the COVID management yeah. um, practices. Because so. I'm having a speech at in January, and I'm going, I've got an appointment already. Yeah. It was four days before. Yeah, that's really what they're set up to do is, is pre, pre um, procedure appointments. Great questions, great discussion, thank you. Yep, just uh, next meeting for some of you, the original um, notice I sent out said the next meeting is January 3rd, 2021, but that would be a year ago and really hard to go back in time, so um, I made the corrections on uh, the ones I distributed today and the ones for City Council is um, the next meeting is January 3rd, 2022. Now, I'm going to ask, um, you, you may get a notice of change of that date because it's, it falls within the weekend of the holiday. Um, you know, Ron will make that decision. It's his, uh, it's his call. It's not mine. I'm here either way, but uh, other people may not be. Okay, do I have a uh, motion to adjourn? I'll make a motion to adjourn. I second it. I missed one that does not discussion. Oh, good. All in favor? <laughs> All in favor? <laughs> So fast. Do you want to keep a copy of that? Thank you all for all you do. Looking really good on that shirt there, Miss Hillman.